and it shall be to him and to his seed after him a covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Okay, so does Pinchas have a priesthood going right now? No? I'm not disagreeing with you, by the way. Some of you are like, yes? <laughs> no? Help me, Rabbi, what's the right answer? Okay. And so we have to understand that everlasting or forever is not what you think it is. And I have a teaching that I might do, and I keep telling you I might do at some point. It's a really short teaching called, How Long is Forever? Because <laughs> scripturally, forever is not what you think it is. Often it is understood as for as long as specific things are in place. So if there were to be a Levitical priesthood, guess whose descendants would be high priest? Pinchas. That's the promise here. No priesthood, not breaking of any of this. But if we have, this would be. So as long as there was, it was a descendant of Pinchas. Does that make sense? Do we follow that? So let's understand when you see this word forever, because some of you say, when you talk about the Torah and different stuff, oh, they say to your friends, well, what, do you got a problem with forever? Well, actually, forever is not exactly forever. It depends. Now, Torah, it says, well, if you look up and see the sun and the moon and the stars, it's still valid. So I think we can still see that it's still valid. So there are certain parameters that you can check. So just understand that what's not clear here, but if you read through, especially because now we can look backwards and see how it played out. Back then, this is the beginning of it. But we can now look back and say, wait a minute, that priesthood came to an end at some point when there was no more priests. So wait a minute, Yahweh failed because he promised him that he had a, an everlasting priesthood as a covenant. Yes, that it would be Pinchas. So it's again, Hebrew into English doesn't give you all the fullness of the nuances of what was going on then. So let's just understand that, number one, not all covenants, again, we can see are for us. This one was for Pinchas and his descendants. But also, covenants are for as long as certain things are in place. So the covenant that Israel broke now needs to have a new covenant or a renewal of that covenant because the new one's not going to be any different than the old one except that this time Israel is going to keep it. And that's what you read in Jeremiah 31, 31. So let's understand that that's what it's talking about. Now, some of you are going to ask me what this covenant of peace is. I don't know. We can guess. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that today. Okay? But he says, I'm going to give him my covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and to his seed after him a covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Okay? So we, whatever it was, he gave it to Pinchas. So again, let's not overstress on things he didn't give to you. Because sometimes people will call me up about things. I'm like, why is this an issue for you? There's so many things that you're still struggling with that are issues for you. So why are you struggling with this thing that will never affect you in your life? But I need to know. <laughs> Don't get all Gnostic on me. That addiction to needing, to thinking you're somehow special only because you validate yourself through information. Oh, I know which makes me special. I know which gives me security. I know knowing and, inform and having information is not all it's cracked up to be. Remember, we talked about it being more relational, and the information is to help you with the relationship. And some of the things in the information in this book, if you could figure out all the sacrifices and how they worked and everything about the temple, you would understand some things that could help you with the relationship, but most of it is stuff you wouldn't be doing today. There's no temple. So it would be a great deep study to do, and I'm not against it. Lots of teachers teach it, and that's great. But some of you are still having struggling with what you're eating. We're struggling with like how to keep feasts and Sabbaths and tithing and all the basic stuff, with getting your eyes in your head and all your thoughts right with adultery and those kind of things, or murder. And, and we got enough things to work on that are much more immediate and clear. So I'm not against the other stuff. Don't misquote me. I get that anyway all the time, so it doesn't matter, but don't misquote me. That stuff can be interesting and can be useful. You can learn a lot about the implied and hinted at stuff in there. But you know what? If I'm a kid and I'm trying to learn how to walk, understanding about how cars work isn't important or how to shift a gear shift so that I'm in drive or in park or whatever it is. I'm still trying to figure out how to get my feet moving. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's take it even back further. Do you, do you remember looking at babies and they're like, all of a sudden they realize, oh, that's mine. How do I make that work? Do I have control over that thing? But that's kind of what you are as a newborn in this. 
to some degree. Okay, you're starting to realize that you have control over things you never realized you had to control over, and you realize you don't have control over things you thought you did have control over. Let me say that slower. You are coming to realize that there's an awful lot of things that you should have control over that you don't, a lot of things that you have tight control over that you shouldn't. And so why don't we focus on those things more? That's what this ministry tries to do. If we ever can get all of that basic stuff really rocking and rolling, maybe we'll have time then to study this other stuff. And I'm not against you doing it, but if you're studying it, meaning all this other stuff, more than the, the everyday walk stuff, you're focusing your attention too much in the wrong direction. You're out of balance. Okay, you're out of balance. So let's make sure that you're not out of balance. Okay? Now, so we have this section here. And so this section is to show us a key piece, which is that when it says that a covenant is forever, and people will say, well, it's not happening now, so the book lied. You can help them understand that forever, as expressed in Scripture, means for as long as certain things exist. And this is really important, because if those things don't exist, then that whole forever thing is, you know, that's a smoke from the Sodom and Gomorrah went up forever. Well, as long as until the fire finally gave out. And in other words, it wasn't going to be put out. It, wasn't, it was going to finish its job. And then when it did, we don't still see it burning if you go by the, the land and you get to where Sodom and Gomorrah was. You don't still see fire burning. <laughs> when it finished, it finished. Okay? So hopefully that makes some sense on that little piece there for how long is forever. Actually, that, get, that was the whole little mini teaching right there without using a lot of extra verses. Because I could have shown you other places where it said things were forever, but clearly it wasn't the way you think of it, meaning like never stopping, perfect, all the time, always there. It means until it finishes and accomplishes everything it was meant to do. Like, we can understand with many things, or until the parameters are somehow not available to do it. Hopefully I beat that to death. We're ready to move on. Okay. Okay.